the heart of the extraordinary journey lies Vilma Rodriguez. She has played a pivotal role in being our guiding light and our moral compass. She's been a pioneer in the field of decentralized waste management and has always believed that bringing the head and the heart together creates a formidable force. It is with immense pleasure that I welcome Vilma to take us through her inspiring journey at Saha Zero Waste. Thank you, Annie and Tanuja. And um, you know, this is such a special moment to have all of us as the fraternity the fraternity of resource recovery, waste management, and uh, circular economy come together to celebrate. Uh, special mentions for Almitra, who's here. <laughs> special mentions for Mr. Ramakant, who's here. You know, they are the leaders and continue to lead us um, as part of this fraternity. So when Sahas, well, as an idea, um, you know, we were ready to register in 2001. Uh, we decided at that time, like a trend, that, it, that there was this trend to have waste management interventions under the umbrella of an NGO. So we registered Sahas as an NGO in 2001. But even at that time, uh, it actually functioned in a dual manner. On the one hand, we had uh, philanthropic grants that were necessary for projects like our Less Plastic For Me campaign, uh, the community waste management center that we set up called Kasarasa, uh, the initial pilot programs for collection of e-waste, Tetra Pak, all of that came under our philanthropic um, uh, agenda and our projects. But on the other hand, we realized that on a day-to-day -day basis, waste gets generated and we could not ignore that. So therefore, it was necessary for us right at the start to offer services. So we offered services to State Bank of India, to Microsoft, but these customers, so-called customers, even at the NGO, had to pay us a service fee. So there was this dual system in which we worked even at that time. 2008, you had Government of India saying to some, with some justification that NGOs should move away from um, actually running any kind of businesses. So they put 25 lakhs as a kind of cap in which you could operate under a business model. This was then the trigger for us and thanks to Sattva, if I think Krishna may be around. Oh, Lakshmi is just, just walking in. Thanks to Lakshmi and Sattva and Krishna and also Alex, we got pushed into actually becoming a business enterprise, a business model. So, however, even when we set up Sahas Private Limited, the thought was always, or the commitment was always social and environmental impact. Uh, and that's the reason why, even at that time, the whole work around it was um, looking at head and heart working together. So the heart was the problem. Uh, you know, waste management, 2013 as well, very unstructured, informal, exploitation, no compliances, and no resource recovery uh, was really happening. I mean, that was really a failure in terms of waste actually being recovered. So the head had to step in to solve all these problems, and that's where we had so much of respect for the corporate sector, which had already such good systems in place, which we then, thanks to our business mentor, Gopal, who was also here, and Lakshmi as well, actually uh, were able to, to deliver. Um, we delivered, we looked at how we have to set up a PNL, review uh, mechanisms, operations, uh, sales, pipelines, customer negotiations. I think we, you know, we were good learners also. So we did our work and that's how head and heart came together. And so today we remember also with fondness, Nelson Mandela who said that when the head and the heart work together, a formidable force is created. And that's the force that we see here today, uh, the commitment to actually bring about change. Business models, 
you know, parallelly, we also looked at the fact that we had to actually look at the industry. And that's when we remembered what Mahatma Gandhi said, when he said that in a gentle way, you can shake the world. So we looked at, you know, decentralized systems and shouting from the rooftops, this is how recovery, uh, resource recovery has to take place. We looked at the informal sector and said social inclusion, minimum incomes, living wages, this is what needs to be done. And we did, and we continue to do, uh, talk to brands, talk to the industry who believes in the triple bottom line. But today in the 21st century, we are saying that it has to be planet and people above profits because that's the kind of commitment that is required for us to get out of this crisis. So it's been a wonderful 10 years, but of course, you know, 10 years is a very short uh, period of time, but I think we now have confidence to mainstream our model. And that's what we're trying to do in the next 10 years. We will be looking to continue what we do, but in a far, uh, in a way which will bring in far more impact. And that's why we also remember what Martin Luther King said, when he said that the arc of history bends towards justice, but it'll not bend on its own. So that's the reason we need as a formidable force to make this commitment to both environmental and social transformation. The journey continues, and um, I have to say that for me, the journey is going to take a slightly different turn because I have moved to Goa with Alex, my husband, and my daughter, Naina. But of course, uh, there's a big team here in Bangalore, and I am not going to be relaxing in Goa, of course, enjoying some of the, the good things about Goa, but at the same time, I think Goa needs to shake up Goa needs a formidable force out there. So that's why, you know, Goa is where we have headed. But I want to share with you and I want to show you the team that is here in Bangalore because I think, you know, there is need for you to meet our field team. Uh, Chinna Papa, Muni Amma, Kokila, Una Malai, come, come, bunny, bunny. They've been with us for the last 20 years, transitioned from the NGO Sahas to the private limited, they continue to work with us. So thank you. Tumba thanks. Thank you. I'd also like to call uh, Arun, Shobha, and Kanika. Yeah? So this is our leadership team. This is our team that that visits in Bangalore, but works hard, uh, uh, visits Goa, but works hard in uh, Bangalore. And uh, Shobha is an is a Acumen Fellow. Uh, uh, Shobha has done the Women's Entrepreneurship course uh, from IMB, so head and heart completely aligned. Yeah. Okay, so let's enjoy the evening. Thanks so much for coming and being with us today. Thank you all. Basically, Goa needs Wilma. <laughs> That's all. So okay. that he can relax in Goa when he comes. <laughs>